All our lives, we've been told. Work hard. Achieve. Get to the next level. But sometimes, our best efforts fall short. We start to think maybe we don't have what it takes. Or maybe we do. Jesus took on the sins of the whole world. He conquered even death itself. He invites us to follow him. He wants us to trust him. And through him, through his body and blood, we are united in Jesus. And to each other. Everything we're searching for. Hail Mary, full of grace. Our hopes and our dreams. Point to the Father. Who loves us unconditionally. Who called us by name. If you knew that receiving the Eucharist would change your life, what would you do? What would you do? What would you do? Join us for the year of the Eucharist. Coming up on this edition of Real to Real. I'm Nick Morganelli. I'll introduce you to the volunteers and beneficiaries of the Laundry of Love in Westfield. Jericho in Holyoke is marking its Golden Jubilee this year as they begin their sixth decade of helping to break down barriers for people with special developmental needs. And a local focus missionary heads to the University of Rhode Island hoping to share her love for her Catholic faith with as many as she can. These stories are coming your way next on Real to Real. Hello and welcome to Real to Real. Fifty years ago, Father Robert Wagner and two women religious set out to bring the Word of God to children and adults with special needs and abilities. Their work led to a new ministry for the Diocese of Springfield and helped to break down barriers for people with developmental needs. Now, a half century later, as it marks its jubilee, Jericho, the Bureau for Exceptional Children and Adults, continues this important work. Kathy Harrington reports. Today we celebrate all the many opportunities that people with different abilities have been able to achieve and the blessing that they are to all of us. Greeting the community before the Jubilee Today Mass, Sister Joan Magnani reflects on her unique point of view of Jericho, one divinely inspired. God inspired, God whispered into the ear of his priest that I need a special ministry. I need a special ministry in the Diocese of Springfield. And God spoke to one of his brides. And that bride of Christ is known as Sister Jones. <laughs> and the two of them said yes to God. With a younger brother born with special needs, Joan felt she had a calling when she entered the Sisters of St. Joseph, a teaching order at the age of 17. And I believe, you know, my faith increased because of working with people with different abilities. I mean, they are so accepting of whatever, and the Word of God means so much to them. They love God from the bottom of their heart, and it just really, you know, fostered my vocation. And Sister Joan had been teaching religious education to people with disabilities since 1968, when she met Father Robert Wagner at a religious conference at UMass. He was in charge of CCD as the priest were years ago. And so a parent with a disabled person went to him and asked him, could her son make his first communion? And so he said, sure. Jericho began as an office in Northampton in one of these big houses on Bedford Terrace. They were helping six families before moving to a home on Whitney Avenue in Holyoke. That was a house that we got for a dollar a year. And um, we set everything up there. And um, we had, um, the garage was made into a classroom. And um, the living room was made into a, um, the sacred area. And, um, and 
Unfortunately, we had a fire there and we lost everything in 1977. Fortunately, no one was there at the time. Evening classes had already ended. And so Jericho used space at Mount Marie for a while. Then in 1978, Father Wagner found this estate on Northampton Street in Holyoke, and it became the new home for Jericho, the Bureau for Exceptional Children and Adults. At first, the focus was on religious education and celebrating Mass. Father Wagner always wanted to celebrate Mass no matter what. This area right here where I'm sitting, we had Mass. Sometimes we'd have like 50, 60 people in here for Mass. After building a pastoral center for religious education classes, fundraising got underway for the Celebration Center with some help from Arlo Guthrie. When we built the Celebration Center, we built it so that we could train people to go to Mass. But it wasn't easy in the beginning because um, many of the pastors weren't comfortable having people with disability in their parishes because, you know, they make noises and they talk out. Parents find the Celebration Center is more welcoming. We went to the first Mass and he flapped his hands and whooped it up and not a single eye in the place turned to stare, nobody whispered, and it allowed me to relax and really take in everything that Father was saying during the Mass. Taking part in the Mass is very special for members of the Jericho community. Everyone remains seated because... You know, the people in wheelchairs aren't able to stand up, so we don't stand either. They take on the roles of greeting people and passing out bulletins, helping with the music, and there's Mary, who is blind and reads at Mass. Endure in Israel as long as the heavens are above the word of the Lord. They're totally immersed in the Mass when they come here. For people with special needs and limited abilities, social opportunities were few. So the staff at Jericho created some, including cookouts, twice monthly dances, summer camp, the beach, and pilgrimages. Families came to enjoy the grounds, the shrines, the way of the cross, and the equestrian center. Things are totally different now than they were in the past. You know, we'll have to, we, we're, and we're looking towards, you know, what, the needs are out there now. You know, what are we going to be doing for the next 50 years? It is constantly evolving. But Linda LaPointe is the it. third executive director at Jericho. Still... The mother of a special needs child, she learned how to be an advocate for Jacqueline, and now it's her mission. One of the things that's happened since Sister Jones' days is three laws have been passed to support people with disabilities in the country. The three are the Americans with Disabilities Act. It gives physical access to buildings, seating, and accommodations. IDEA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, which means schooling and being able to take part in the life of the school. And the Rehabilitation Act, which prohibits discrimination on the job. The Sisters of Providence who used to do the home visits and consult and say, you know, possibly you could get this service or, you know, they helped with medical and things like that. I um, compare that to the advocacy that we do where families come in here and they don't know what to do either about their child's education, they want recreational services, how do I do transportation, any of these things. I feel really strongly that this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. So it's a wonderful thing to have that mission come to you and then be able to see it through. LaPointe says it was a different generation that sought to institutionalize the disabled. Now she says so many young people go to school with those who have special needs that there's greater understanding and acceptance. There is plenty for Jericho to celebrate at 50 years, but Father Donatus says this day is a day for giving thanks to God and... And we pray that the doors of Jericho will continue to be open. For Real to Real, I'm Kathy Harrington. Next week in the second part of her report, Kathy will introduce us to some of the families that found Jericho to be a life-changing ministry. And now a look at how a simple need can be a tremendous act of charity. 
Business owners who are also parishioners in Westfield started a new ministry two years ago that not only provides a great service to those in need, but brings our Catholic faith to a local laundromat. Nick Morganelli shares now how clean clothes can lead to joyful hearts. It's an act of kindness and caring, an act of charity, and it's called Laundry Love. A national program that anyone can start and fund to help those in need, Laundry Love only has two locations in our diocese. Westfield is home to the only one in the Pioneer Valley and was started and funded by Kathy and Richard Sipek. Definitely a needed, it's a needed ministry. I was shocked when I went in and saw the price of a wash and a dry. It's very nice, it's great, the people, I like the service. So I have a washer, but I need a special part for it and I can't get it right now. We have a number of patrons who are transients. Maybe they don't have a home, they don't have a shelter, they might be moving through, and their clothes get pretty dirty. They might come in with a backpack or a shopping cart full of dirty clothes. And so we're able to, you know, get them washed, dried, folded, and send them off on their way with nice, clean smelling laundry and a little bit of, you know, they, they feel good about themselves. Yep, come on over, we'll get you. Good help. Signage helps, but word of mouth through neighbors and friends is how it has grown over the past year. It's a neighborhood community. We look out for each other and we help each other out. That's what it's all about. Yeah, come right here. We, got the we get to meet people that you would never meet in your lifetime and you get to spend time with them um, doing their laundry and that's, that's, the, that's how we get them in the door, so to speak. And Once you've met a person on, on more than one time, you start to develop a relationship with them and they come in excited to see you and we're excited to see them and they've become like family to us now. Johan was celebrating his sixth birthday on this day and he and family joined St. Mary's in Westfield as new parishioners this year. The Corvo family took him next door to get him a birthday gift. Thank you. Hey, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Good to see you. Big toe? Okay. Big toe? Okay. Take care. See you, buddy. Caitlin, a St. Mary's High School sophomore invited by her mom, took a good friend and they have been helping out since the ministry's inception and saw an uptick in participation from the community. I remember the first time we were here and we just played cards the whole time because no one came. And now we have dryers running out and washing machines running out and stuff like that. Why do I do this? Because I love the people here. I love to hear their stories and you get to see them evolve too. We get people to come back to church. We've seen people around the church building and we're like, hey, you know, why don't you come in with us? And they're like, oh, absolutely, because now we know their name and they know our name. So it builds a community. Yeah, we got dancing, we got games, we like to have a good time and smile. <laughs> the volunteers fill a need, especially in this high-priced economy, and from socks to soles, it has become a ministry. Father Yui has been at every, every single uh, laundry love, and we do pray. There's a lot of time that people will break down and tell a story of the hardship that they're going through right now, or they have a family member going through a hard time. And, and we'll call Father over and we'll actually pray with them. So we're evangelizing a little bit. And I think it's just to, uh, to help people, you know. And so whatever we can do for the least of the person in the community, that's our goal. And other communities have people in need as well. What I'd really like and what I have a hope for is that we could maybe launch a few other la uh, Laundry Love Ministries. It's needed here in Westfield and I'm sure it's needed in Springfield and in Holyoke and in Chicopee. And I would be perfectly happy to walk them through getting it started. But we can't do it all by ourselves, but if we can get other churches involved and get some of the people from their churches, um, we'll help them get started and of course I will finance the whole thing. Um, because it's such a pleasure to do it, and it's, it's, it's really a gift to, to, to share with others. If you'd like to learn how you can begin a laundry love in your community, visit iobserve.org for the contact information. Servicing what's in the cart and on the heart. In Westfield, for Real to Real, I'm Nick Morganelli. Thanks so much, Nick, and let's hope that expansion plans to other communities are successful. And there's much more ahead on Real to Real. Dan Dumas has news from around the Diocese of Springfield. 
And a new focus missionary from Belchertown is hoping to win the hearts of college students, build them up in their faith, and send them out into the world. It's all still to come on this edition of Real to Real. Like Catholic TV on Facebook. Once you're there, you can join in on discussions, make friends with other Catholic TV fans, watch behind the scenes videos from the studio, just finished this one, two, two. and stay up to date with the Catholic world. All this at facebook.com slash Catholic TV. Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence, an ideal rental setting for retirees to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We have bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, and wellness and entertainment programs. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Mom, call me when you're not so busy. I'm Dan Dumas with your Real to Real News Briefs. Deacons and their wives from across the Springfield Diocese gathered to congratulate and praise some of their own as the 21st Annual Deacon Appreciation Mass took place Friday, September 25th at St. Teresa of Lejeune Parish in South Hadley. Sharon Rulier has the story. More than 75 people attended the Deacon Appreciation Mass celebrated by Springfield Bishop William Byrne. The yearly event was a time to recognize the diaconate ministry, honoring those in particular who were marking 5, 15, and 25 years of service. Deacon David Picard is the director of the Office of the Diaconate. But to everybody get together and to share what's been exciting for them in their ministries is wonderful, I think. And to have the bishop offer mass and all, did you hear the singing? Music ministry was provided by the Diaconotes, a band made up of local deacons. Wasn't it great? Yeah. Look at what happens when a bunch of deacons get together and sing it out. After Mass, a dinner took place in the Father Cyril J. Burns Parish Hall. Deacon Bill Toller, a deacon for 21 years, says his ministry, especially involving service to the less fortunate, is personally fulfilling. And I love it, and, and I'm going to continue to do it as long as uh, God gives me good health to do it. And so that's been, the, I think, the great satisfaction has been in introducing people to opportunities to go out and, and serve the poor and marginalized particularly. Bishop Byrne said as the shortage of priests in the church continues, deacons are more important now than ever. In addition to their own ministry of service to the poor and uh, preaching the word and helping administer the sacraments, the, the deacon can be an, an invaluable support to the parish community so that the priest can be even more free to do what he does, to preach the gospel and administer the sacraments. Congratulations to the 70 active and 25 retired deacons in the Diocese of Springfield, as next year the diocese will mark the 40th anniversary of the diaconate. In other news, 
the St. Thomas More Society of Western Massachusetts sponsored its 21st annual Red Mass, honoring judges, lawyers, and those who work in the legal system. This traditional Mass that dates back to the 13th century took place at St. Michael's Cathedral on October 2nd. David Martin has more. Past honorees participated in the procession during the Red Mass. Chief Celebrant Springfield Bishop William Byrne was joined on the altar by other priests, including Monsignor John Bonzotti, a 2022 St. Thomas More Medal recipient. The time-honored Mass invokes the blessing and guidance of the Holy Spirit to members of the legal profession. If you read the paper and you see what they're up against day by day, I think they need our prayers every day. Um, they're kind of on a front line and our country is changing and this and the other things going on and um, those lawyers, judges, social workers, people on the front lines are uh, really giving their all and they need our prayers. Bishop Byrne blessed the St. Thomas More medals before awarding them. Other honorees were attorney David Carlson, retired Massachusetts State Trooper Michael Cotone, Massachusetts Superior Court Justice Edward McDonald, Jr., Attorney Salvatore Cerbelli, and St. Thomas More Society Chaplain and Sister of St. Joseph, Eileen Sullivan. And it's a great honor. Um, I've been their spiritual director for 20 years, and I have just been so amazed and at awe at the faith-filled lawyers that we have and judges that we have in this area. Their kindness, their goodness, for me to receive the award, um, it's humbling. Sister Eileen explained that the red vestments worn are traditional and festive. They symbolize hope, spirit, goodness, and love. In Springfield, I'm David Martin. Finally, each year in October, we celebrate St. Francis of Assisi, the founder of the Franciscan Order and patron saint of animals and ecology. Nick Morganelli takes us to Agawam to meet some furry family members during a blessing of the animals. We therefore invoke the divine blessing on these animals through the intercession of St. Francis. As we do so, let us praise the Creator and thank Him. For the cool rainy weather made for a lighter turnout this year at Sacred Heart Church in Agawam with furry family member cats and dogs eager to participate as Deacon Brian Hunt offered scripture and a special blessing with holy water. It is called the Aspergillium. Most people refer to it as the sprinkler. And it's just basically the instrument that we use to take the holy water and we bless animals, people, the sick. We have certain masses during throughout the year where there's a special blessing. It's hollow. It's got a little bit of a, um, a, a medium in there that when I put it in the holy water, it soaks it up in there. Ordained in 2021, this was his first time administering the blessing by himself. Every year during my formation, fathers asked me to be part of this ceremony. I've always been the assistant. So he said, well, you know, once you're ordained, that's going to be your job. So uh, I said, okay, so that's fine. I, I enjoy it. I love to meet all the people. I love to get out there and, 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 uh, and interact with them and get to meet the pets. And he has two of his own at home. I have a, an 80-pound boxer by the name of Louie. Uh, and then we inherited, we rescued a, uh, a bearded dragon from a friend. And um, his name's Sydney. Dan and Norma Coogan brought two pets, their main coon cat, who was a bit camera shy and Golden Retriever Bella, who so is a therapy friends. dog. Make friends, you gotta shake her make friends. Make friends. She was trained at two years old. We kind of had an inclination that she was a therapy dog because she just loves people. Bella is a member of Bright Spots. She's fully insured and licensed, and they go to nursing homes. They've been at Bradley Airport. They do the Holyoke Soldiers Home. Um, they do basically the hospitals in the area. She is also a daily visitor to Robinson State Park and has a self-proclaimed title. Unofficial park mascot. mascot. She walks the park 365 days no matter what the weather is. The animal owners, as always, feel that the blessing gives their pet the spirit to do their good work. I feel it's very important because they're uh, a symbolism of, in your household of, of hope and they're very patient with people. And when you're having a tough day, they're very good for mental health. And the caring is mutual. Our family pet, and he's our baby in the household. And he's totally spoiled, but we're good with that. Finding faith in our furry friends for Real to Real, 
I'm Nick Morganelli. You can read more on these and other stories at iobserve.org, where you can find articles from our Catholic communication staff, as well as on-demand episodes of Real to Real. That's iobserve.org. I'm Dan Dumas, and those were your Real to Real news briefs. And finally today, Claire Orr of Belchertown always loved going to Mass. As a child, her family worshipped at the former Mater Dolorosa Church in Holyoke, where she said she would get caught up in the music, the ornate beauty, and the welcoming and friendly Franciscan clergy. Well, this fall, the 22-year-old recent graduate of Endicott College in Beverly begins her role as a focus missionary on the campus of the University of Rhode Island. There, she hopes to share her love for her Catholic faith with as many students as she can. I sat down with Claire at her home in Belchertown in midsummer before she headed off to campus. I started at Mater Della Rosa in Holyoke, and I just always loved going to church. As a student at Mater Della Rosa Elementary School, Claire Orr said she enjoyed learning stories from the Bible, as well as having the opportunity to talk about her faith with others. Now a parishioner at St. Francis of Assisi Parish in Belchertown, Orr attended public high school where she found things to be different, saying a classmate once told her, We don't talk about God here. It was the realization while in college of wanting to share her joy and love for the Catholic faith that would eventually lead Orr to become a focus missionary. Recognizing the significant impact the college years have on a young person's future, Curtis Martin first founded the Fellowship of Catholic University Students, starting with just two missionaries at Benedictine College in 1998. Our mission is to uh, go onto the college campuses and evangelize and reach out to those students with the joy of the gospel and be able to share uh, the hope that we have as Catholic Christians in building students up in that faith so that they can then uh, go out into the world and live a confident Christian lifestyle wherever they end up. FOCUS now includes nearly 800 missionaries across the country in some 200 locations. Orr will be one of four focus missionaries on the university campus this year and looks forward to meeting students in dorms, on the sports field, or in the campus center and answering questions. What is my purpose in life? What does it mean to be a part of the church? What does it mean to live this as a student? Is this something just for older people or how do I live this as a student here? So it's a place where students can come in ask those questions, and be welcomed even if they don't agree. Orr says the goal of Focus Missionaries is not to convert, but rather to meet people where they're at. I think one of the best ways to reach people is through relationship. I'm not here to just be like, you have to be a part of my religion. I'm not here to proselytize. It's, you're a human being. You're made in the image and likeness of God. You have dignity, and I see that. Orr says her life has been transformed by Christ, and she wants nothing more than to bring joy to others, introducing people to the life-changing messages of the gospel. By loving them like Jesus would love them, that they can then turn closer to the gospel and be inspired to live a life like that. And if you'd like more information on Focus Missionaries, we have a link at iobserve.org. And for this week, that's Real to Real. Thank you for watching. Before we leave, a word of thanks to all who donated to their parish to help defray the cost of the Catholic Mirror, our sister publication. Thank you for helping to share the good news. And if you haven't made your donation yet, you can still do so by donating in your parish. Indicate that this gift is to help the parish cover its Catholic Mirror distribution. And again, we thank you. I'll see you right back here next week at this same time for Real to Real, your window on the world around you. See you then. Real to Real is a production of the Catholic Communications Corporation, funded in part by the annual Catholic Appeal, and the support of you, our faithful viewers.